We're constantly doing trade-offs and we've been taught to think this way, that when we sacrifice one thing, it will benefit something else. And that's just a lie. I really don't believe that anymore. Hello, hello, and welcome to Alchemy Mindset. I'm your host, Anna Hasty, business mindset coach for women and a sound healer. If you are ready to become the most aligned, magnetic, and confident businesswoman you are worthy and deserving of being, then this show is for you. This is where I share everything from mindset, energy, and spirituality, and how to embody your future self in business and life. Sprinkle that with deeply relaxing sound healings and meditations, and you have the Alchemy Mindset Podcast. Hit subscribe so you always get the latest episode. Now let's begin. Hello, hello. Welcome, 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 dear listener, to this fantastic, fabulous, and insightful episode of the Alchemy Mindset Podcast. I honestly had to re-record this introduction just to do this episode some true and proper heartfelt justice. When I finished recording this interview, I was on such an energetic Hi. This conversation I had with my guest was really so amazing. And I just felt like my initial recording of the introduction, I was just babbling. I was just like, oh my God. I was like, okay, stop, Anna. Let's start again. Just breathe. So I'm recording this introduction for the second time. And it's my pleasure to introduce to you Emily Robinson. Now, Emily reached out to me when she was traveling through Broome, she's currently traveling around Australia in her bus with her hubby and three kids. And as she came through Broome, she was like, oh, hey, can I be on your show? And when you meet someone for the very first time and it just clicks and you think to yourself, ooh, you are one of my people. Well, Emily is definitely one of mine and I am hopefully one of hers. (laughs) And in this episode, you will be just hearing so much intuitive wisdom and guidance, which is laced all the way through. And I believe that no matter if you are a parent or a caregiver, a business owner, I just know you will find some amazing gold nuggets in our conversation. So first of all, let me introduce you to Emily. She is the founder of Intuitive Parents, Intuitive Kids. She is a mother of three, as I said before, a qualified, a qualified academic teacher, energy healer, and shamanic creator. After nearly burning herself out and being diagnosed with a rare form of cancer, she changed her life and her family's life completely. With over 15 years' experience in the holistic healing and self-development space, she has helped parents and their kids work through difficult relationships heal inner trauma and access their inner voice and their intuition. And of course, you can follow Emily and the IPIK community, and I'll have all those links in the show notes below. In this episode, Emily and I get busy talking a lot about your intuition and the importance of being an intuitive parent to support the mission these children have on the planet right now. Of course, we talk about how she started IPIK and as well as a lot of great wisdom around what it means to be returning to your intuition, the act of juggling parenting and business, and how your business as well as parenting can actually be the trigger for you to do your inner work right now. In all honesty, I will definitely have Emily back because even after I stopped recording this episode, the next conversation she and I had was just solid gold all about business and mindset and we went deep and it was great. So I will definitely have Emily back again. But for now, I'm sure you'll enjoy this first conversation I have with Emily. So sit back, relax, grab a beverage of choice, put those little ear pods in. Now let's begin. Emily, welcome to Alchemy Mindset. What's really exciting today is you are actually my first in-person podcast guest. Woohoo! Yay! <laughs> We're actually sitting on the couch in my guest room at my house. Emily has been traveling around Australia for the last, what, over a year now with your family in a big, massive bus. We've just been talking about this and I'm like, oh my gosh, it speaks my language. Traveling, buses, family, amazing. And yeah, and here you are in Broome, 
and we're having this amazing conversation today. Welcome. Thank you so much. It's amazing to be here and connecting with a like-minded soul. So yes. good. Yes. I feel like we've already got a lot of in common, not only just business wise and being like energy healers and helping people tap into their intuition, etc. But the fact that you had met, we were just briefly talking about traveling and all the things that come up when you throw into the mix of traveling. And I was like, oh yeah, I started traveling like 2005 and you're like, yeah, me too. And I'm like, oh my goodness. (laughs) Oh wow. So good. (laughs) It's amazing. So please start by just introducing yourself, Emily, tell us a little bit about your story and how you've come into this moment and time here in Broome as you are. How long have we got? Um. <laughs> <laughs> okay. As long so, as you need. <laughs> yeah. So I'm Emily Robinson, founder of Intuitive Parents Intuitive Kids, and truly my life is an evolution, like an intuitive evolution, just taking baby step after baby step, following these nudges. But it began back in the UK. So I'm actually from the UK and I had a really stressful job working as a lecturer for a university and a college over there. I was also running an animal healing business at the time and I had my son. So I was juggling having my own business, trying to manage my work at the college and the university, having a newborn and I basically hit burnout. I mm. hit a point where I just physically could not keep going. And the end result of that was that I had a really rare form of cancer. And it was just a massive shock. Like I had no warning, no, I was just given a phone call, you have to come to hospital tomorrow to start oh, wow. chemo. Wow. Yeah, it was huge. And there was only actually two hospitals in the entire country that would deal with this particular form of cancer. And so it was just, everything stopped. The whole world just stopped because we were supposed to be flying to Australia to visit my husband's family. So my husband is Australian and yeah, we couldn't go. And I was like, what about our trip? And they're like, that is the last of your worries. Oh my goodness. (laughs) And so it was just huge. I had my chemo and I was really fortunate. I recovered fully. And that was the moment that we decided we were going to leave the UK and emigrate to Australia. So I've been over here now for 10 years. Mm -hmm. I've got two more children. So I have two daughters as well as my son. So I've got three beautiful kids. And I think that change and moving into, we actually moved into outback Queensland to this tiny little town in the middle of nowhere. And it just, I had so much space to suddenly dive deeper into myself Mm -hmm. even though I was already healing and I was already in that energy space I really hadn't listened to my intuition I really hadn't taken on board how much stress and pressure I was putting myself under and I was really running those matrix programs of control and validation and needing to strive and push and hustle Mm -hmm. yeah and the end result was burnout and I'm just so grateful for that experience it sounds Mm. weird but I'm like I am so grateful that happened because we probably wouldn't be here now yeah so that was a huge part of my journey and then moving into such a small community as the children started to get older and particularly my eldest we met other homeschooling families and so this was like the next intuitive nudge and step into building intuitive parents intuitive kids because we moved into becoming a homeschooling family. So I've been homeschooling now for six years. And that, again, was one of those moments of, oh my God, I don't think I can do that. What if we fail? What if we don't keep up with the system? And over these six years, I have unhooked and unplugged so many patterns about what it means to be in today's education system. Mm -hmm. And coming from the academic system myself, if you'd asked me 10 years ago, I would have said, oh, my children will go to private school and they'll all be grade A students. (laughs) (laughs) Because that's what I was like. Yeah. And so I think just that entire reprogramming of myself initially, then reprogramming my expectations with how my children were gonna grow up, Mm. it really led me to this passion about helping other families to become more intuitive and Mm -hmm. trust their gut. Mm -hmm. And yeah, now we actually a year ago sold our property. So now we're homeless as well. (laughs) (laughs) So we live full time on the road. And yeah, it was another piece of the puzzle that intuitively about three years ago, we had this idea, this Mm -hmm. vision that we were going to do this. And it took us about 18 months 
to actually go from the idea to it being a reality. Mm -hmm. And yeah, it's just every single step of that journey has led us to where we are now. Um, And yeah, now we are traveling full time, just tripping around, doing our thing. (laughs) That's incredible. What an amazing story to, to go from like that It would have been like less than 24 hours that your world just turned upside down when you're in the UK to suddenly, to then healing through that, then deciding now we can go to Australia. (laughs) This is where we are. Go from hectic, busy UK, because I've lived there for a year. My mum's from the UK. So I've I've experienced being in England and the UK in general. But going from the busyness of that to a small remote town in somewhere in, what was it, Queensland? Yeah. Yeah, wow. That would have been a big contrast all in itself. So I can only imagine there was, like, again, those shifts and changes from being in one environment to another i'm guessing that you were prepared for it in some shape or form it wasn't like oh we're just gonna we'll just land here and see what happens it was like no we're actually going there we're planning this my husband yeah my husband had a job there he actually left three months before me yeah so he was there and he was actually thinking i was going to turn up and hate it he was Ah. like oh my god She's going to arrive. And I mean, we had no shop, no, yeah. no supermarket. The nearest supermarket was 40 minute drive. No other town yeah. within half an hour drive. Yeah. And you just drive yeah. on a straight road yeah. with nothing. I mean, yeah. you'd know that living yes. out here. Like, yeah. Yeah. Um, and so coming from, like you said, a really suburban area in the UK. Yeah, where a 40 minute drive, you've passed through so many <laughs> towns and cities all in 40 yeah. minutes, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. So true. Yeah. But it was. I actually found it really liberating because Mm. I think I shed the story of keeping up because I had no Mm. one to keep up with. Yeah. And I I realized when I got there, I was like, I could be anybody. People could say, who are you and what do you do? And I could say, I'm an actress. Or I'm, I'm an astronaut. astronaut. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no one knew me. Yes. So it was almost like having a clean slate. Mm. And I just, I really, one of my biggest fears actually about going out there was being really isolated, especially mm-hmm. with my work, because yep. it can be quite isolating when you're working in a spiritual capacity. And I had a really good network of healers and friends and therapists around me in the UK especially having the cancer obviously Mm -hmm. I was having a lot of different therapies and treatments Mm -hmm. and so it really forced me to actually have to do my own inner work Mm -hmm. and I didn't have a choice there Mm -hmm. wasn't therapists there that I could actually rely on and so I had to start building this inner relationship with myself and like I said truly it was the best thing that ever happened and even building a relationship with my son because prior to that So Tom was three when we moved, Mm -hmm. and obviously those first three years, I was just busy, working, pushing, hustling, running the business, plus working, plus trying to look after him, that truly he was pushed from pillar to post, looked Mm. after by my parents, going to a childminder, and when we moved into Australia, I was a mum. Yeah. And people actually said to me, what are you going to do? What are you going to do? You're going to be so bored. And I was like, no, I absolutely loved it. But I just hadn't given myself permission Mm. to be a Mm mum. And so, yeah, it was just such a revolution Mm. in my experience and my growth, which you could never have foreseen. And we only moved there because of Chris's job. Mm. And then we stayed for nine years. (laughs) (laughs) That's a bit like me here being here. There's actually one thing I want to add, but yes, being here, I've been here. I was going to stay one year in Broome and I haven't left. This is my 10th year of being here. Oh goodness. Who would have said if I bought a house, got married and had a kid here, I would not have known that version of myself back in year one. But it's really interesting. You said there that you were just looking forward to being a mum and that was okay for you. Whereas, did you feel like other people were like, oh, are you going to be okay just being a mum? Was there any sort of, let's going to say in air quotes here, judgment or thoughts as to how you would be? Because I've had these conversations come up recently with some mum friends that were all in our first year of being a mum. And there's that question of, and I often feel it as well, is it okay just being a mum, diverting all my attention, just having my attention for my child, that's okay, yet I often feel that pull of society, I often feel that pull from within myself that I should still be doing more, I should still be working, like that word should, (laughs) we love that word, (laughs) I must or I should or I I can still work on my business but that's that really hard push-pull, like what was your experience going from, like you said, the UK where you were in that hustle burnout, like you were heading towards burnout but hustle busyness 
juggling all the balls to landing yourself in Australia and then being like, oh, I've got space to just be a mum. And yeah. yeah, I think there's a few things in that. One is that for me particularly, it was a blessing. Like I think the universe really pushed me to mm, that point. Like okay. it was like I needed that. And I think my friends just had never, ever seen me not do They'd never seen me sit around and be Mm -hmm. this like relaxed person that did nothing. They were like, you're not going to cope with that. So I think their judgment was purely based on what they knew of me. And Mm. to be true to myself, I probably had that fear myself. What am I going to (laughs) do? What am I going to do there? And actually it was the opposite. So I surprised myself. So I think for me, it was a necessary opening to to just soften into what it meant to be Mm. a mum. But I think more about the question of society conditions us as mums we're damned if we do and we're damned if we don't if you're Mm -hmm. a breastfeeding mum that's great you should also give them a bottle so if you want to go back to work your child can do both but if you don't breastfeed then that's also not right because now you're not able to oh it just everything about it it's just if you do one thing it's wrong if you do the other thing it's Mm -hmm. wrong it's what is the right thing as a mum and I think there's a lot of people that see being a mum as if you're a stay-at-home mum, now you're not contributing. And mm. we can lose our sense of purpose mm-hmm. in terms of becoming a mum and then feeling, but what's my role or do I want to do? Mm. And I think trying to balance that is intuitive parenting. Yeah, That is, is exactly what we're meant to find out. It's can we find the balance for ourselves? And it's going to look different for every single mum out there because... Your truth is different to my truth. Mm. And if there are mums that are listening to this that feel that sense of guilt around running a business Mm. and also trying to be a mum, I can wholly relate to this because being a homeschooling mum, I probably haven't been without my children for probably most of the 10 years. Maybe the first year or two before my daughter was born, Tom did do a couple of days at um, the preschool. Yeah. So I had some time without a child. But then from the moment my daughter was born, I had obviously a baby, like, and then a toddler. And then Tom started homeschooling. And so I have literally had a child with me Mm. for that entire time. And obviously I've been running the business. This is the fifth year. It Trying to juggle those two things together, not feel guilty if I'm doing things for the business and then the children want my attention and trying to hold a space for all of it is definitely an art Mm. but something somebody said to me once which I just was like oh my god that hit home so much being a shamanic creator and really using the energy of the earth and really coming from that place of knowing that everything is connected Mm. we were talking about the spider's web and Mm -hmm. she said to me If you look at a spider's web, it has all these different compartments. And we look at our life as if everything is a compartment. Well, there's me as the mum. There's Mm -hmm. me as running my business. There's Mm -hmm. me as a wife. There's me as a friend. And we have all these different parts. And she said, but the spider doesn't treat the web as separate. And she said, when you're giving your attention to your children, you're building your business. When you're giving your attention to your business, you're supporting your children. Mm. When you're looking after your kids, you're actually building a relationship with your husband It's just not a tangible, direct link. But the energy that you're giving is to the whole web. Yeah. And it just made me stop treating my life as a a trade-off, like Mm. a sacrifice. I'm giving my attention to my children. That means my business is suffering. And I was like, no, it's not. It's actually growing because of this love that I'm building with my kids. And it changed my whole perspective around how I could be showing up in all aspects of what I do Mm -hmm. from a place of full capacity to love and give and be in that highest energy that I have, knowing that in doing that, I'm actually supporting the whole. Yeah, wow. Yeah. That is such a brilliant way to describe it. I'm actually visualizing this spider web. Very nice looking spider web, by the way. <laughs> Not like the creepy one I almost ran into in the bush the other day. <laughs> but yeah, but actually seeing, as you said, and everything feeds into it mm. in some way, shape, or form, because at the end of the day, we're the centerpiece and we're yeah. the spider. Yeah. So we're creating our web as well. Yeah. And if you if a fly lands on that web mm. on one side, you're going to feel it on the other side. Mm. So for us to think that giving to our children is taking something away from our business or Mm. if we're trying to build our business that our relationship with our partner is suffering, it's we're creating that compartmentalization. Mm. We're creating that separation. Mm -hmm. And we know in the energy world that really we're here to 
hold polarity mm. and to balance that energy. For me, that really cleared up a lot of the, the mum guilt around trying to do different things and mm. learning to really tap into our own intuitive knowing yes. of what's right for me Yes, and not measuring that against anybody else. And yeah. that, that's just something we learn in the matrix that we will compete and there is the comparisonitis, mm. you know, disease that we all suffer with sometimes and are really feeling like we're not measuring up. And that is such a mum thing. Mm. And I think it's a business thing too. Oh, absolutely. And it, that gets painted so much through what I see through the coaching industry where coaches are helping their clients to get out of, like you said, that comparisonitis. And we get, we see that so much, as I said, like it gets painted so much through social media because that's one of the forms of being able to see what somebody else is doing within their business. And particularly if, if you have a shop, a brick and mortar, like a shop front business, maybe you just walk past other businesses, but in the social media or the online space, you can walk through many businesses all in the same niche as your own and then come out the other side and be like, I'm not as good as that person or that person's getting better than me or, or actually I'm actually better than that person because yeah. let's face it, sometimes we do compare ourselves in terms of like how greater are we than another person. Yeah, yeah I feel like one thing you said there and I just, it took me a while just in that this time that you've just explained it, the energy that you have towards one aspect of what we're doing in life, how it feeds into the other aspect. It is that, isn't it? It's that ripple out effect, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. And it feeds everything. What we do feeds, If I, I can't describe it now because yeah. now I've just understood it. <laughs> yeah. And now I'm like, I don't have words to understand that. But it, it's so true. It's yeah. what I often say to clients, like you may be healing or working on yourself right now. It has that ripple out effect into those around you as well. So what you work on helps shift and change your vibration. But people will also feel that and also benefit from what you're shifting and changing within yourself. But when we're working, I guess, when we're, like you said, we're in our spider web. Like you said, one, if we could imagine like the spider web is like shooting energy through its little layers of the web, we're shifting and changing something within ourselves. It is having that filter out effect, isn't it? Yeah, I think we are really conditioned to believe in the concepts of sacrifice. Mm. That when we do one thing, we have to sacrifice something else. I can't have a really incredible business and be an amazing mum mm. because it's not possible because I have to give time to this and I don't have time for that. And, and I think one of the biggest mindset shifts I ever had was moving away from the either or approach mm -hmm. and into the both and. Yeah. It's always a both and. Yeah. You can have both things at the same time. You, yes. know, you can be an incredible mum and run a really successful business. And I think for me, that mindset shift, yes, it still come with strategy changes and pivots and you try something, it doesn't quite work or you notice that it's really out of balance and you have to readjust. But truthfully, I have got the both end mm. and it's not even two things. I'm also living a life on the road with my family, living my best life and running a successful mm. business and <laughs> calling three kids. and. Mm looking after the dog and planning our trip and all these yes. things. And I think we are so limited sometimes by these constructs that shut us mm. down and having that vision of the web. It's like, yeah, you can make every single compartment on that web a success. Mm. It can grow. It can be so exponentially expansive because you are the spider in the middle. You create it how you want it. And it doesn't have to be a massive web either. No. Like when we look at a spider web, like obviously in pictures, it can be like a massive, huge thing. What if it only had like two layers, two rows or three whatever's segments? Isn't that an incredible web? But I, it's the more you speak about this, and I know this, what you're speaking and in the energy you've got in this words, it will translate to people. Yeah. I can see it now. And it's what you said, like we've been put in a construct that this is the either or not them both. And this, to me, comes back also to that, wor that world of manifestation and abundance that you can actually, if you can visualize yourself and tap into that part of you or that person, that version of you who is in that in both world, she's a great mum, she's present with her kids, she has a thriving, successful business, she's on the road <laughs> traveling with the dog and the cat and the kids and the van and everything else and or whatever the version of as a listener you you see yourself and you deeply desire and want it to be it is you can have that within your spider web yeah absolutely and Does I that, think, is that right yeah, yeah. of course yeah. and i think 
there are three things that I talk about a lot, the three Ps, I call them, that mm-hmm. really make this happen. Because I think there's also a lot of spiritual bypassing that happens around manifesting and mm. the concept of mindset and it's really important that we internalize and use our intuitive knowing to discern between our ego trying to make mm. desires and goals mm-hmm. that we're going to have these 10k months in our business mm-hmm. or be seven figure business owners or mm-hmm. whatever it is and it really comes down to three key things the first thing is presence Like we have to be present. If we are in hustle, in push, in this place where we're not actually truly aligned with ourselves, then we're actually never going to create those desires. We're not going to be able to manifest because we're out of our energy. We're out Mm. of our integrity. We're out of our authentic self. Yep, 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 yep. So being present as a mum, as a business owner, as a wife, as a friend, as a daughter, wherever we're at in our life, is the key to everything and that's really where your intuition starts to come into its own because it's not a gift it's everyone is intuitive we just Mm -hmm. have to learn to practice that tool and when we get present it can be as simple as taking a deep breath every day waking up in the morning doing some journaling or doing some yoga or dancing or sound healing Mm -hmm. or I don't care (laughs) Mm -hmm. anything that shifts your vibration Mm -hmm. into a place of being in the now and opening your heart and really listening to your own body Mm. and that's really all intuition is yeah so presence is the first p the second p is prioritize so what happens so so often and you've mentioned it already is that whether you're a parent whether you're a business owner you will prioritize things that actually are not moving the needle and moving Mm. you closer to your dream. What we do is we orientate towards fear. We orientate Mm. towards the things that are going to actually keep us in those shoulds, what you should be doing. So we feel like we're doing the right thing and we're, we're fitting in the boxes. It takes a lot. It takes a lot of courage and a lot of bravery to really show up from a place of your true authentic expression because it isn't going to fit in the box no it's always going to go against the grain the second p is prioritize because you have to choose you have to make conscious choices about what is a priority if your priority is to be an incredible mom and build an amazing business then doing the laundry pile and worrying about whether you folded the washing in the right way is not a priority Mm -hmm. (laughs) it's not important and you can end up falling into the trap of maybe trying every single business strategy out there and tying yourself in knots because you've given your power away to a particular idea that you think you should be doing Mm -hmm. and so what happens is you're prioritizing the wrong things you're actually prioritizing things external to self You've forgotten to listen to your intuition. You've forgotten to come back to your presence, what you know to be true. And so prioritizing gives us the path. Yeah. And the obstacle will be the path. The fear will be the path. I can guarantee that (laughs) the one thing you don't want to do is the one thing that should be on the top of that priority list. Yeah. So that's the second P. And the third P is participate. What I see happening all the time, and obviously for me, it's generally with mums, where they tell me how they want their life to be and this incredible lifestyle that they want with their kids. And then I say to them, this is amazing. This is possible. What's going wrong? And what's not happening is they're not participating. They're not actually taking action. Mm. They're telling me the things. They're saying, I want to do this. Yes. But I can't because. And then I've got this entire list of the reasons why they're not doing it. Yeah. And I'm like, manifesting is not about visualization and holding a dream and a vision. It's part of it. Mm -hmm. But the true manifesting comes when you take the steps. Yes, absolutely. 100%. You can't get anywhere, no matter what the journey is, whether it's physical or manifested. You can't get into the car and go, I'm going to go to the shops and just sit in the car. (laughs) Car ain't going to take you there. You actually have to drive the car. We don't have cars that take us there yet. But it's this, yeah, and absolutely, in manifesting, it's the same. You have to take the action. Like you said, follow those intuitive nudges and hints and ideas, inspiration, even if it's batshit scary. Like, it can be really frightening. Some of the things that we feel like are taking us out of the norm, taking us out of, like, how we've been, how people have perceived us or seen us, how we've felt it's been in our comfort zone. But taking that step is the first part in reaching that 
desire, intention, goal of having that life, whatever it may be that you want. Yeah, absolutely. And I think the other piece that kind of comes tacked on the end of that Mm. is that you have to, at some level, have faith and trust. Oh, I love that word, trust. I love it. It keeps coming back in my life. Same as me. I'm like, it's an ongoing practice. This isn't something we just wake up and go, oh, I I can do it. It's all just easy. It's, no, I'm always practicing. How can I trust more? How can I release that control and Mm. be in a space? But the truth is we don't need to know the whole journey. We don't need to know how we get from A to Z. We just need to know what A to B is. Yes. And that is just an intuitive nudge it's Mm. just what feels like the next right thing to do let's Mm. just do the one thing and we get caught up in yeah but I haven't done this and that and again that's the prioritizing we're Mm. prioritizing all the things we should have done or the fear of the future but in the past this happened so now I'm projecting that Mm. onto what's going to happen whereas when we come back to presence when we just come back and go oh that's right there's just the now and I just get to make a decision right now from this place. That's it. Yeah. And every time you do that, trusting that you're going to get closer and closer to that end goal, that's how you build an empire. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> that's how you create an amazing relationship with your family. Yes, absolutely. And I feel like everything you've just spoken to, I'm, I feel honestly, this is stuff that I've been meditating on, reflecting on over the last, I would say, six months of having Ava in my life. She just turned one and the first six months were just amazing. But then there was that moment where I'm like, maybe I should go back and to do, should, maybe should. (laughs) I'm going to go back and do sound baths. And then from that moment on, it was like, okay, I'm putting myself back into work. And all of that, like the frustration, the toing and froing, the seesawing of, is this right? Is this wrong? Should I be doing this? Should I be doing that? Should I be even further along? I'm not like that person. All of those great old conversations I've had in my head has made me come back and realize, actually, no, my journey with my business is my journey with my business and it will unfold and move forwards in the way it's meant to, just as my life and my relationship with Ava will unfold and move forwards as it's meant to as well. Like they're, like you said, it's not that they have to be separate, they are intertwined, obviously, but having that realization of this is okay, whichever way it comes out, it's okay. And I don't have to do it all now. It doesn't have to be all now. It can be that gradual process. And coming back to like strategy or following what someone says that we could potentially do, should do. I seriously reckon it should be erased from the dictionary. (laughs) Oh, I really thought about that. It's for me, I've had this realization and just chatting to one of my business friends the other day, it was like, what if I'm seeing all these ways of doing and, and running business and strategies and blah, 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 blah. But that's okay but I don't need to actually do them. And I just need to hone in on what is right for me. Yeah, absolutely. And I think that applies to being a mum. It applies to how we show up in the world. And Mm. I I really believe that when we really connect more deeply with our own intuition, we trust ourselves and we trust our higher self, Mm. not the ego mind that tells us all the shoulds and have tos. Mm. And when we're in that play, the clarity is there. Mm. It's just that our ego wants to have a plan because that feels safe. That's normal. Our nervous system wants to feel safe. It wants to feel like it knows the next step. Mm -hmm. But truthfully, no exponential growth happens with guarantees. No. There is no... (laughs) You are not going to have a huge massive shift in your life if you're looking for something that is risk-free yeah but that's not how it works and when we learn to lean in more to trust and we learn to lean in more to what is right for us as the individual self and as a mum, this actually becomes quite tricky when I've got three children so I'm holding Mm. a space for three children that are very different my youngest actually has special needs So I've got one that requires a lot of attention and Mm -hmm. and special kind of coercing into (laughs) doing things in a really beautiful way. And then I also am holding the dad space when Chris is away working because he's not there all the time as well. Then I'm trying to hold that. And then I also hold space for his feelings when he gets back and he's stressed out. And what becomes really tricky is trying to navigate and hold a space for your family because... We can hold a space for ourselves. We can be like, I know what I'm doing. Mm. This was my bright idea Mm -hmm. to move into a motorhome and travel around. And when I first actually mentioned this to my husband, he actually looked at me and was like, we can't just be gypsies. That just isn't a lifestyle that we can do. In his head, this was not a reality. He was very 
resistant and very that is not normal people will judge us mm. he was in that place whereas I was like I can care less what people think I'd already <laughs> worked through my stuff to yes. be like eh, yeah. whatever yeah but his reaction was very to shut it down mm. this is not a thing he was already borderline with homeschoolings and interestingly someone has to be the leader mm. in the family and as a mum very often it is we feel that sense of why does it always have to be me yeah Yeah. I can relate to that it's 100 (laughs) and that feeling of I'm so sick of holding a space for everybody in this family but that that is the truth somebody in the unit has to be the empowered leader has to be the spider has to be the one that is like I am going to make a choice here and hold an open space for everybody to also have their intuitive Mm -hmm. feelings on the table Mm -hmm. and that's where things can get tricky because as the mum or as our own individual self even if it's a dad we might know what we want but that might not fit I've got my eldest who initially didn't want to do the trip because he wants to go to high school Mm -hmm. so he's been homeschooling for six years and I'm like mate really of all the times you decide he's had the choice every year yeah and now he's I want to go to school and I was like oh how am I gonna navigate this (laughs) But actually being able to hold a space. So this is where truly being an intuitive parent comes into play. Mm -hmm. Because no decision is going to serve everybody in your family. You're all different. You're all an individual. There is never a right or wrong. This comes back to polarity. Mm. It comes back to our spiritual practices of knowing that there is a season for everything. We don't feel great every single day. We have our menstrual cycles where we always go through a sticky part of the month where our husbands are like, what is wrong with you? (laughs) You're possessed. (laughs) Yes, I know. (laughs) And it actually, funny story, just side tangent, but in our group the other day, somebody asked this question about what would your kids, three words your kids would say about you. And I was like, I'm going to ask my kids. And this morning, my daughter said, kind, loving, and happy. And I was like, oh, that's so nice. (laughs) I asked my son and he said, what did he say? Kind, a good teacher, emotional. (laughs) I was like, thanks for your honesty, Tom. (laughs) And I was like, that is true. That is true. I am really emotional. I'm a Pisces son. And so I have a lot of capacity Mm. for emotion. But I think he wasn't saying that as a bad thing. It was just a neutral experience. That's life. And because we've spent so much time talking about emotion, expressing it, being so open in Mm. the family to discuss what does everybody need today? Mm. What does everybody want today? How can we navigate this as a team, as a family? It's like taking all those compartments and bits on the web and saying, let's make a conversation about this. Mm. And we do that in ourselves we can talk to our parts we've got like our little teenager part and our inner child that's like i am not doing this thing (laughs) i do not want to be seen on social media (laughs) exactly and it's like there's this reconciliation process of opening communication with our parts Mm. opening communication with the parts of our lives the business our mum self our wife self and then we have to also open conversations with our family And this is where truly being an intuitive parent comes into play. Because when you're in your energy, when you can feel and hold different vibrations and be Mm. able to accommodate all the seasons at once, there's no right or wrong. Yeah. Yeah, There literally is never a right or wrong. Yeah, yeah, That's just a made up construct again that we're imprinted on us. Yeah, it's black or white. Yeah. What if it's not? No, exactly. (sighs) Yeah. Big melting pot, really. Yeah, that's really interesting. I love that way how that you've described coming back to yourself to navigate all the intuitive wisdom that was presented in your family and how how to navigate and hold that as well. Yeah. And I think as as parents, most of us have been, you know, parented by Mm. our parents in a very authoritarian fashion. Mm -hmm. Very much, we tell you to do something, you will go do the thing. And feelings are not really something that are are held truly. They might pay attention if you're upset, but it was very much, it'll be fine, or let's find a solution. Mm. My husband does that a lot. I'm like, just try just to listen, just Mm. hold a space, that's all we need. Yeah. (laughs) He's like, yeah, but let me just tell them what to do next to fix it. And I'm like, they don't want you to, they just want you to hold them in the emotion, that's it. But because we don't have those skills, it's really silly of us to actually 
self-blame, to fall into the trap of feeling guilty that we're not doing mm. something right, how would we know how to parent this way? How would we actually have these skills if we didn't learn them? Mm. We all learn through observation. And I think for me, this is why Intuitive Parents, Intuitive Kids is more than just a business. It's a movement because my vision really is for parents to realize that as we shift these really small pieces of ourselves, Mm -hmm. they're really just narratives. Once we start to flow more with being able to hold feelings, I've had to learn that. Mm. I started off as a screaming, smacking mum that felt horrendous every time I would lose it and then dived into mindfulness and still couldn't hold it together. And until I started doing the inner work and really channeling those higher vibration codes, Mm. that's when it shifted. Because now the way I show up, my energy, how I show up, how I'm being, how I'm relating with my children is natural. Mm. I'm not trying to teach them anything. I just show up and I'm leading them from that empowered space. And so when we start to do, that's when we really are being intuitive. We really are holding that space of being able to know that, yeah, it doesn't matter what happens today because none of it's right or wrong. And it's just that beautiful evolution. And the more times that we do this, our children are going to have these skills. Maybe not all of them. Mm. Still going to take on patterns. They came here to learn like yes. we did. They're human. They yes. wanted their challenges. Yes. They chose us. That's yes. another thing. They chose us. They chose this oh. family. They chose their siblings. They chose this entire situation. And so they are now learning to do things differently. And then they're going to pass on that knowledge to their children. Like mm. you said at the beginning, it's a ripple effect. And so truly, the more that we lean into being intuitive, to coming back to ourselves and not giving our power away mm-hmm. to whether it's business stuff or mum's stuff or it's like, yes use your mentors as a place to learn and grow mm. but come back to yourself and go what does that mean for me yeah what resonates with me and my truth yes and you take all those little nuggets of gold and all that wisdom and then you co-create your own business strategy your own way of showing up and that's what you were saying about yeah. seeing all the different things people are doing it's what's right for me yeah that's it. What's yeah. right for me? Yeah, exactly. And it's okay. Like you said, you can take those little gold nuggets from all different mentors or whoever you've worked with or peers, other family members, friends. You can take all those things that you do and put them into your own blend of this is right for me. Yeah, absolutely. And I think mm-hmm. that that idea that as we are you know, evolving ourselves, I know for me that my business journey has been such a journey of personal growth. Mm. I didn't go into business thinking, oh, I'm going to come out a completely different person. (laughs) But as I have worked through all of these different pieces of business, it had, like, my entire self has been rewritten through that experience. Don't don't you believe that? That's that's one thing I felt like with me starting a business, again, first of all, it was like the scariest thing I could ever possibly think of. It's so uncertain wouldn't you say being in business is not guaranteed for yourself working for someone is you can, you rock up you get do the thing do the work you get paid you go home it's great but being working for yourself is so uncertain but oh hold on now i've had my brain glitch <laughs> <laughs> that's the mum brain oh, I know. <laughs> like, that's why I said, my brain's just glitched it's the mum brain i know she goes on a bit of a roll here and now i've interrupted you too oh bless what were you saying you were saying that oh yeah that's what i truly believe For me personally, like my journey into energy healing, spirituality, learning all the things that makes me Anna has come through work. It comes through doing the work that I do, but has evolved even more since I started working for myself. And the stuff that I have realized, unraveled, healed, worked through, all that things, celebrated. We can all stuff, stick that in there as well. Let's celebrate. It's not all <laughs> drudgery and hard work here. But all, all of that has come through, I feel, from working in my business. Yeah. And then it's had that ripple effect out in learning how to navigate relationships and things that I've learned and been able to do has helped me work through my relationship with my mum and strengthen my relationship with Francois and healed things that I know um, have been passed down through generations that will affect Ava. I truly believe that when you work for yourself, 
be prepared. Yeah, mm-hmm. absolutely. To have a great time. Yeah. <laughs> it's not that scary, but it is one aspect of the work that you were destined to do here in this time as yourself as you've incarnated is like you've the business is the one that's come through to help you learn and shift and change and grow yeah and I think again depending on the person Mm. they like I know I have mums that come to me and say one normally one of their children in particular Mm. is that catalyst for them Mm. it's the same thing like another compartment Mm. on the web but it's that one child that is just pushing their buttons relentlessly. Mm -hmm. And they're like, I actually can't cope with them. And so I've had to change myself. Mm. I've had to do something in order to be able to hold a space for this. Wow. And initially it begins by, and I think again, it relates to business. We think, oh, I'll get the strategy. Mm. I'll get the tool and the thing and I'll go fix that bit. Whether it's the business or the child, I'll find the solution that will help their behavior. I'll do the course that says in three days, your child will stop having toddler tantrums. (laughs) (laughs) You buy into these storylines because they seem like they're going to give you the answer. But the truth is the answer is always within yourself. Mm. And for some people, it's a child or the family dynamic that pushes them to that absolute Mm. limit where they have to dig deeper. For some, it's the business. Mm. I feel like I've done all of it. And maybe it will swing and Ava will become the one that... (laughs) I think 100% I've seen, I often say to friends, Ava's probably going to be my little lesson in life as well at some point. Yeah. Yeah. And I think for any parent who is on a spiritual journey, these children this is what I've been seeing in my work is the children coming in now are Mm. so high vibrational Mm. they will not stick to the rules they are extremely strong-headed a lot of kids now are being diagnosed with things like ADHD or Mm. autism or they just don't fit in the box and Mm. as starseeds these children are here their journey and their mission is to get parents to level up It's like, see your shit and deal with it. Mm -hmm. This is what I am here for. I will continue to push every button that's on the table until you deal with your anger, you deal with your grief, you deal with feeling rejected, your isolation, your Mm self-worth issues. The list just goes on and on. Mm. Because truthfully, the planet is shifting and we have to shift. Mm. So they've come in with this job to actually ascent make us move Mm. and change and even the trip to a certain extent was another piece of the puzzle for me Mm. the business has been a huge one the the children especially my youngest like I said with her special needs and then doing the trip that was another piece of the puzzle I think I said to you at the beginning just control like having to let go of control Mm. It is impossible to control anything when you are on the road full time. Yes. And so having, again, it's like a spiritual evolution. I feel like my entire life is a constant, I'm learning something. And I really see that as being an intuitive being. This is how we're supposed to live. This is shamanic creation. It's living in relationship with your life on a daily basis, knowing that every single feedback that you get is for you. Yes. It's not happening to you. You're not a victim. It's happening for you to learn something and to grow and to pivot and to change Mm -hmm. and evolve on your journey. Yeah. So whether that's your business, your kids, your situation, whether you want to homeschool or anything that you want to do, every single opportunity is there for you to shift and raise your vibration and actually do the inner work. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I agree with that. I want to know, and I'm sure the listeners are very curious, how did how did intuitive parents and intuitive kids come about? Like, how did that start? So it really did start because I chose to homeschool Tom. And when I took him out, the reason I did that was because I was seeing, he was only in his second year of school. And what I started to see was that he was tired when he came home. He was really disconnected. So that relationship I had spent, like, three or four years building since we lived in Australia suddenly started to deteriorate Mm. because he didn't have the space to have such deep conversations anymore and I felt like my connection with him was getting disjointed yeah and the other thing that I saw was he was extremely bright and he had no resilience so when something was hard he would just say I'm not doing it I can't do it and I'm like you can you're really clever and we started doing a lot of growth mindset work and it was just really interesting he was a tick the box kid because he knew the answer so tell the answer and that was it i'm done 
they'd say, write a story, an A4 page. He'd write an A4 page. I hadn't finished the story. It's like, I've done the page. Mm. You ask for one page and they're like, yeah, but Tom, you could write two pages or three pages or five because he's like, no, you asked me to write one. I've done it. Next thing. And I just saw this whole relationship starting to embed with this idea that if I just tick boxes, I'll get through and it will be yes. easy. And yeah. And so I, it was his choice to, to start homeschooling. But what I wanted to do was to not just teach the main subjects. I wanted to teach, I wanted to bring in energy work into the teaching. So mm. for him, that became normal. So instead of teaching things like, I don't know, we did the human body. It's, oh, you have five senses. I didn't teach him that. I mm. taught him you've got six or more senses. So he, in his head, that is normal. That you don't just have five, you have six because you have your intuition. Mm. So he learnt things about his body that other kids wouldn't learn mm. that to them is not normal because they were conditioned with a different yes. narrative. To him, he knows he has an aura. He knows he has a chakra system. He mm. knows there are meridians in his body because to me, I didn't understand why you would leave that out Mm. when it's scientific it's a fact we can measure this stuff now and And let's face it you go to a yoga class everybody's talking about a chakra yeah (laughs) even if you're not even if it's the first class you've ever been to and you're not familiar with it you soon will be absolutely (laughs) but it was just the whole idea that there's almost the education system is missing half the book Mm. it's like we're only teaching half of it Mm. and I was like I don't want him to learn that I want him to learn the full story or what what I know at this point And so that was where it began. And I started to create, you know, different programs and different tools and do my own research. And that led me to write a program called the High Five to Happiness, which was basically these five key pillars that I felt were the five things you really need to build that loving connection and a really happy family life. And it was just mindful awareness, emotional resilience, building self-confidence, gratitude and self-love and then how to manifest goals Mm. and I felt that those five things were if you could really embed those five concepts Mm. as a family Mm -hmm. that would actually allow the whole family unit to evolve and grow together in a really intuitive way Mm. and so I did that and then I started I was still working as a healer at that point and I started channeling light codes and doing a lot more high vibrational work and shamanic work Mm -hmm. One thing led to another and I just started to completely shift my healing work away from just doing kind of energy healing, one-off sessions into packages and seeing how when people really committed to the journey, Mm. their transformation was incredible. Like it just blew my mind. I was like, wow, we set an intention and for three months we worked together and the outcome was just incredible Mm. rather than people just showing up for a session. Yeah. Yeah. And what I started to see was that even though I had the tools, even though I was teaching the tools and showing Tom how to be more mindful and trying to do that for myself, that it wasn't completely resonating because I still needed to shift my inner story. And Intuitive Parents, Intuitive Kids was born out of marrying these things together. Instead Mm. of just saying to people, here's a strategy, Mm. here's all the tools and the activities and meditations for your kids and mindfulness exercises, here's that and Mm. here's the actual work. This is the deeper spiritual work you need to do Mm. so that you as the parent raise your vibration to be able to show up in a different way. Yeah. And that completely changed the way that parents were able to relate to their kids. Mm. And what was so interesting and fascinating was that when they started doing that inner work, their kids' behavior just changed on its own. Yeah, wow. They didn't do anything. And they're like, you would not believe it. I had my session last night. This morning I got up and they just, there was no bickering. There was Mm. no, and I'm like, because the energy shifted and it's Mm. this spider's web. Yep, yep. And I just the more obviously it's an evolution the more you start doing it the more people come back and say what just happened what just happened I've got this child that was a screaming mess that is now actually coming to me saying oh can I have a hug Mm. and parents were just like this something is happening and Mm -hmm. I'm like it's because we're now focused on energy vibration and resonance not just on the strategy Mm. and the mindfulness Mm. and so I think it really was just a natural evolution from my own experience and everything I teach and still teach to this day is 
what is happening in my life. Mm. It's what I am doing, what I'm learning, what's happening with my kids. Even the days where I still have a meltdown, I'm able to show up and say, guys, this is normal. Let's not expect ourselves to be perfect parents. There is no, no such thing. Let's just be present mm-hmm. and realize that we're going to have days where we don't have the resilience and we lose it and we shout and then we feel bad and then we're able to recultivate that feeling of empowered leadership and have a conversation with our kids about it and mm. say, look, this happened because and apologize, but really teach them about how to navigate difficult experiences and mm. challenges in life. And that truthfully is what the intuitive parenting journey is. Mm. It's knowing that you're going to have good days, you're going to have bad days, and that we don't need to judge ourselves. We just need to be open enough to realize that's just energy moving yeah. through mm. and it's all okay. Oh, that's yeah. such that's such a great wow can i say like download that you had not really a download but it was through your experiences that's led you to this journey to let's just say it's a journey that you've been on that's led you to this moment in time and now witnessing and seeing how much this is helping other parents which again coming back to what you said these children that are coming into this time and place and how they're actually here to shift and change the planet it's almost like Sometimes I feel like we're like, oh, they're here to shift and change the planet. We'll just let them go figure it out and we'll just sit here and watch. (laughs) When in actual fact, they're turning around and looking at us and saying, we're helping and shifting and changing you first because it still has to have that ripple effect in some direction, doesn't it? And it's not necessarily, they're just coming back to mirror us. Not mirror us, but... It is a mirror. It It actually is. The whole thing is a mirror. Every Mm. single thing you are seeing outside of yourself is a reflection of what is going on internally. Mm. So... When parents are saying, my kids are not listening, I am so sick of repeating myself. I'm like, okay, and what are you not listening to? Mm. Are you listening to them? Are Mm. you actually truly taking that time to be present to listen? Or are Mm. you saying to them, yeah, yeah, carry on, I'm just cooking dinner, I'm just doing this at the same time, I'll be there in a minute, yeah, carry on, I'm listening. It's like, you're not listening. Mm. And so then when we're expecting them to listen, it's like, that's a mirror. They're Mm. just showing you where you're not listening. Mm. And it Mm. could be, you're not listening to yourself. Mm. It could be on the inside that you're not acknowledging your intuition. You're not listening to what's really important to to you. So every single thing that they are showing you in some way, shape or form is a reflection of something within us because Mm. we're all connected. Mm. And so when we start to then even have that realization, when I do the starseed activation sessions for children, What that does is gives the parent a download about their child that brings understanding, that it just opens their heart. They're Mm. like, oh my God, I can't believe that what they saw was this child that was being naughty, disrespectful, was like a a tornado ripping their house apart, but they had no understanding of why or what was happening. Mm. And then when you channel that information in and you get to say to them, look, The reason they're doing this is because they are so high vibrational and this is their journey. Their mission in life is blah, blah, blah. The parent then, their whole energy changes Mm. because that knowledge, it is a light code that Mm. is downloaded for them. It's, wow, that just opened a piece of my heart that I now have capacity to hold that child in a different way. Yeah. But it was nothing. What did we do? Yeah. What we did was tap into the energy. We had a conversation. Yeah. The conversation opened these thoughts and processes and their intuitive knowledge started dropping in. And that's the magic and the power mm. of co-creation. Yeah. Because it's, you know, it's just a conversation. Yeah. But it, it literally can change your entire life and your kids' lives when you start and to I, see that. And I'm just saying, like, my heart is so full and so full of love just hearing all of this because oh, I, d- I don't really have any words, but just so much, like, emotion for this. Like, it's such a powerful work that you're doing that is so powerful and so, like, it is... Wait for the plane. <laughs> it's a just really heartfelt moment. I just feel like it's really special work. It's really special work that you're doing but it's the needed work that has to happen now. Yeah, yeah. And the effect that this is going to have for these children and for us as in our generation and beyond, it's just going to be incredible. Yeah, and I, I think yeah. when I first started Intuitive Parents, Intuitive Kids, actually the download for that came when my youngest daughter was born, the one I was saying has these very quirky energy imprints. Yes. And... 
I had no idea, but I would wake up obviously in the middle of the night to feed and various things. And I would just, I had this notepad by the side of my bed. It was just a scrap paper. Mm. And I would just write all these ideas. And intuitive parents, intuitive mm. kids was in the in these notes. Yeah. And the idea of the high five was in these notes. And I had about 10 pages of just scribble in the middle of the night. Like it was over months. And when I look back, oh, I've got goosebumps. <laughs> when I look back on that now... I'm like, that was just divine downloads mm. coming in that I just didn't realize. And when I look back now thinking that was 10, 10 years ago we moved and then the way everything has worked out, I'm like it's all perfect, it's all divine, it was all meant to be this way. But truly, I don't see intuitive parents, intuitive kids as a business. Mm. I see it as a movement. Yes. And as a... 100%. It's just, it has its own life and yes. its own mission. Yes. Because I believe so strongly in the mission and trust that it was just downloaded to me that we would do this work with families and seeing the benefit that it has, it's just, it just blows your mind mm. because it's not me. It's not, oh, I created all these things. No, <laughs> I just channeled the things and then share the things and I just and I love supporting people yes. to learn and grow and I'm yes. a teacher that's my job I was yes. a teacher yes. <laughs> I'm still a teacher yeah I just teach something different yeah so yeah I'm so glad that it resonates and yes. it, it hits that point of like, yeah as a mum and a business I just yeah I hope it I really hope it inspires some of the listeners to be gentle with themselves mm. and to realize that we've all got this yeah we've all got this it is in there yeah it's yeah. all within us and sometimes it's like you saying maybe it's just being in your program in your community for just a small amount of time and then you realize you're like oh now i remember yeah and oh now it's opened up that thing or oh now i have a better understanding because sometimes it's just that in behind us isn't it? it's like we don't understand why but we know it's there we just can't quite yeah unlock that door for it to all just rush in a way and help us understand and then when you when we sometimes do take that step towards understanding we're not ignoring it or the ignoring is suddenly got so loud that like you said the kid is just telling you mom you're not listening to me you're not tuning in mom you're not tuning in yeah or dad or whoever is when they do when that happens yeah and if I look back that's what happened when I had the cancer mm. It was mm. like I was not listening. I actually mm. had gallstones before that, about four months, five months before, mm. several times, and then had to have my gallbladder out. And it was like that poke, mm. and I just wasn't getting it. And at the time, I was still working as a healer, mm. but I was so in the story and still stuck in that matrix that I didn't have the space or the capacity to see it. And I think you're absolutely right. If we often take the opportunities or the little gentle prods that the universe is giving us just those little mm. steps of oh here's a little person that popped up on your social media today and you're yeah. like oh that's interesting it might not be that you buy from them or it might just be one thing that they say mm. that acts like a, a code a light code that just drops in and you're like wow that's incredible mm. like that just and I feel like for me that is my life now mm. every single thing that happens is there's something in it. Like, I see something. We went to the pearl farm. Oh, great. Yeah, it was amazing. I loved it. But I didn't know that pearls were... I knew that they, in the natural environment, mm. made the pearl with bits of sand and grit that mm. got inside the oyster. I didn't know how they did it, but mm. I knew that's where it came from. But at the pearl farm, for the listeners, if they don't know anything about pearls, they actually embed a piece of mussel shell, like yes. a seed, inside mm. the oyster. And the oyster thinks, oh, it's a foreign object. And it surrounds it with this liquid called nacre that turns into the pearl. And I was like, wow, this is so amazing. The kids loved it. And we came home and I had this entire download about this is like us. We have all these stories in us about how we're not good enough, about why we're not measuring up, about all the shoulds that we mm -hmm. have to do. And I was like, isn't that just like the muscle shell? It's just a matrix program mm. that we've been embedded with. Yes. And what if we just loved it so much? What if we smothered that story with so much love and just so much beautiful high vibration energy? That's the pearl of wisdom. Mm. Every single thing that we see as a challenge is actually the pearl yeah and we know that in our heads and I have had that experience so many times where people say to me I know that I've, I've heard that before I already know that but now I feel it mm. now it's embodied in me I'm mm. like 
oh my god yeah and that's the codes dropping that's yeah. having those aha moments where you're like moved from the place of I know that in my head to actually feeling it in mm. your body where you're like yeah my whole body knows this now. now yeah yeah that's incredible yeah it is, isn't it yeah amazing I just before we finish up I just want to tap into quickly because my business also focuses on mindset within running a business were there any mindset challenges or hurdles that you came up when you were starting intuitive parents intuitive kids oh my goodness so many but I think again as you navigate and move through it a lot of people now often say to me where do I begin starting a business and I'm like oh my god (laughs) I literally don't even know where to help you because there are so many things like to I don't know how I did it I just it's taken me five years and I'm just still learning and Mm -hmm. still growing but I think One of the key pieces that, apart from the idea of sacrifice and the both and that we talked about at Mm. the beginning, one of the other really important things that I have learnt through the business and through life and through taking these huge quantum leaps, moving from the UK to Australia Mm. was a massive decision. The same as homeschooling, the Mm. same as doing this trip, the same as starting the business and investing in high ticket mentorship those decisions came with a lot of fear Mm. and when we go back to those three p's presence prioritize participation the the fear stuff has been such a game changer for me in my mindset knowing that fear is my friend fear is actually showing me the path the obstacle is the path Mm. what we tend to do is see the obstacle and be like oh my intuition's telling me this isn't the right thing it's Mm. spiritual bypassing we're actually giving ourselves a reason not to do what we truly want to do because we're using the idea that our intuition is off or something isn't quite right yes no that's fear Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and there is a difference and it's it's subtle we have to be able to really be in tune with ourselves and have developed that relationship with ourselves to know when we're doing that (laughs) sometimes we don't see it i've done that many times too and made decisions and thought oh That wasn't what I was meant to do, was it? Six months down the line and you're like, "Ah." (laughs) but I think really learning that we can walk with fear, Mm. that fear is actually helping us and not something that we need to back away from that when it feels hard, it's not hard. It's just new Mm. because our brain is conditioned. Those neural pathways are laid down to only do life in a particular way that keeps us safe. Yeah. So of course, When we start talking about entrepreneurship or being a mum or homeschooling or leaving, selling your home and Mm -hmm. traveling, of course your nervous system is going to go into fight flight. Of course fear is going to come up. And when we start to welcome that and go, yay, more fear, (laughs) woohoo, it doesn't always feel like that. But it's that feeling of realizing that we can walk with that experience and both and. Mm. I can be in fear and I can still do it. Mm. I can feel like I'm falling apart on the inside and still be successful. I can have this really emotional day and still be a great mum. Whereas what we tend to do is to fall into the fear trap, to shut ourselves down, to guilt ourselves that Mm -hmm. we're not doing, not being a good mum today because I'm sad. For me, I celebrate that. I'm like, what's the difference between happy and sad? They're just two different emotions. And I get to have both. And I get to share that with my children, so that's normal. And actually allowing ourselves to hold a mindset where fear is our friend. Mm. And the more we lean into it, the greater the expansion on the other side. The more we pull away, the more we orientate towards what we don't want. Yeah. And so that for me in the business, in motherhood, in life has just been the absolute game changer. Because when the fear comes up now, I just go, huh, okay. Let me just sit, let me breathe, let me yes. be present, yeah. let me prioritize, is this what I'm meant to be doing? Mm. And then let me take action. And it could be anything. It could be showing up on social media to mm. do something that feels uncomfortable. or And it could be things that I've actually spent months saying, I hate doing, or I don't want to do that, or that is not what I'm supposed to do. <laughs> and then it comes up again and again and again, and it's like, maybe I am meant to do that. <laughs> I've just been you know myself this story and when I actually lean in and do it within such a short space of time it becomes normal yeah so I think yeah 
that feeling of knowing that the fear is there to help you. It's like an indicator. It's like, this is the right path as opposed to thinking I've got to move away from that. Yeah. 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 That's such a good lesson and such a good, if we want to nutshell it, it's like a tip. (laughs) Yeah. yeah. (laughs) But it's not really, but it's such a good reminder for people listening who are in business that if you are coming up against those, what you feel like challenges or not necessarily roadblocks, but challenges or hurdles or resistance, fear of doing something, like you said, take a moment to pause, see what's happening inside, sit with it, but know that often that is the way forwards yeah the obstacle is the path yeah every time yeah every time the biggest the thing you're most resistant to is nearly always the thing you're meant to be doing yeah but it's that trust again it is (laughs) love that word trust (laughs) i love it i love that word trust amazing emily thank you so much for being on the alchemy mindset podcast this has been like such a brilliant conversation i'm so glad that divine wondrous events and synchronicities have enabled us to connect today and be here how can people get in contact with you can get know more about the intuitive parent and intuitive kids project how can they do that yeah amazing thank you as well for having me (laughs) because it's been so good and yeah it's always nice to meet like-minded souls intuitive parents intuitive kids we have a free facebook group called the quantum parenting collective for intuitive mums so that is a free space that anybody can join lots of content in their audios videos i pop in there pretty regularly to share different things that's happening Mm. behind the scenes and then we also have the paid membership space the ipik academy which is where you can work with me more closely and actually get mentoring and support and where you can access some of those programs that I was talking about Mm. in our vault or a VIP membership as well. All information is on the website www.ipikproject.com. Excellent. And I will put all that detail in the show notes as I'm always, I'm pointing and indicating downwards. (laughs) (laughs) But yeah, thank you so much. I am so happy that we were able to connect today and that we were able to do this in person. How cool. And I just hope you've had such a wonderful time up here in the Kimberley and in Broome and happy travels wherever you may be going to next. Thank you. Yeah, it's been amazing and yeah, so grateful that the universe brings us together in these ways. I know. So good. Excellent. Thank you. Thanks, lovely. Thank you so much for tuning in and listening to today's episode. Please rate and review this podcast so that it can continue to thrive and reach more listeners. I love to know who my listeners are, so please screenshot this episode and tag me on Instagram at Anna F. Hasty. And I look forward to connecting with you in the next episode.